it's cooled down considerably. Uh, so I'm staying a little bit low now. I'm mountain near Mazama, kind of at the Lone Fir campground. Running in the shade, nothing serious. Uh, I'm saving the serious stuff for when it gets hot again in the next couple of days. I've never been out on this trail and I'm curious to see how far it goes. It looks like it just kind of connects up to the, to the highway. So I'm curious to see what all that looks like. So that's our mission for today. Okay, so just cross Cutthroat Creek. I don't even know if you can hear this, but over there, there's some pink flags. And over here, some more pink flags. Thank you, flaggers. So no idea, no, no idea where this goes, none, but, uh, you know, I know that there's a trail over there somewhere and then there's a road over there. So I think we're going to be all right. Next time, next time. I'm coming through here with leather gloves. There was a sign that said that uh, this section of trail was abandoned, but Clearly, abandoned trails die hard. It's pretty clear just looking at the ground that, that there definitely was a trail here at some point. Oh, well, there's another flag over there. That's a weird place for a flag. Any day you get to have a guided bushwhack on an abandoned trail is a good day. Flag down. Well, good news, bad news. The good news is um, the flags seem to be holding up. The bad news is, I think there is no other trail. I think, I think this is the trail. Do you know those old video games where like you're fighting or you're walking around and you get hit like, you know, a few times in your life points, your percentage of your life score or some bar kind of ticks down, um, making you more and more vulnerable. Um, I kind of feel like that right now. I feel like I sustained a little bit of damage. If it's like this for another mile, I'll, I'll be out here all day. So retreat. For now. Okay, that, that was kind of heinous. Great example of the wrong tools for the job. Gloves, pants, boots. Let's run back 
and see if we can't drive up to the other trailheads uh, that appear on the map. Looks like it would be fun. Gotta sign up for some trail work. Gnarliest bridge ever. It's pretty cool to think that this connects to where we were the other day up in the mountains. That's pretty rad. When I was in grade school, I was pretty good at science. I know, big surprise, right? Um, it was kind of the one standout thing, at least for me, the one thing I was good at. But I remember getting a really terrible grade on, on a project once. This was like fifth or sixth grade. Uh, we were asked to do a research project and it was supposed to be some kind of display board. And we were given like minimal instructions. Like, you know, we were told, okay, put up some board, put some uh, information about a given um, insect. We got to choose an insect out of a bag. I chose the American burying beetle. So many things wrong. First, we're in Hawaii. Why the fuck am I studying bugs from the mainland? That's one thing that was an issue. And second of all, like, really? You're gonna ask a sixth grader to feel good about themselves? studying an, an insect that rolls shit up into balls? Like, what the fuck? Anyway, everyone else in the class had put together these beautiful foam core boards with construction paper and me? Well, I, I don't know, we had cardboard. We had a lot of cardboard boxes. So I made a display out of cardboard boxes 
and permanent marker and I drew the bugs myself and I wrote all the notes myself. I did everything by hand. I got like an F. Even though I put just as much information on the board and we all walked around the class, but because mine wasn't kind of displayable, I got an F. And I distinctly remember at that point realizing that school was fucked up. I tried to be a good kid, so I understood that I had to play by other people's rules. Still, I bring up this story because I think it's an important prequel to what happened the following year. These types of projects probably were meant as practice for the science fair. We all had to participate in the science fair. The following year, at the science fair, I remember seeing something that had a big impact on me. The day of the science fair, we all showed up in the auditorium to assemble our displays. So after you kind of finish yours, you kind of go around and see what everyone else is doing. This is, I think, before school. Yeah, it was fun, it was a fun little social thing. And I distinctly remember walking to one end of the auditorium and I saw how to make a pinata on one of the boards that belonged to some folks in my class. They were so excited. And I knew right away this was going to be a problem. And what happened really shocked me. Those students disappeared for like half the day and we never saw that project ever again. That board was gone. Nobody talked about it. It was completely like it never happened. Like it was just poof, gone. I thought that was really strange. In hindsight, I, I totally get it because it's clearly a ginormous failure of the science teaching at that school. You know, I didn't go to the best grade school. It was fine. I did have some good teachers and, and some bad ones, but that was a clear example of somebody collecting dots instead of connecting dots. And when I look back at all the emphasis that was placed on making sure your boards look beautiful as opposed to what they actually said, what they were taught was to make it look good and to have a recipe. These were the two things they were taught. The scientific method was anything but in this case. On deadline, everyone makes mistakes. Kids make mistakes all the time, especially. So it's, it's not that some students missed the boat and made a pinata instead of did an actual experiment. It's no big deal. It happens, whatever. You know, there's a lot of high stakes stuff in grade school, which I think is dumb. Tests, big projects, and things like that. Ugh. Don't get me started. But I think it was clear to the faculty, and it certainly was clear to me at the time, that this was a failure of explaining what science was. Now, you know, I, I was still also a kid. I didn't really know what science was, but I knew enough to know that it wasn't that. And I knew enough to know that something got miscommunicated. And I, I at the time, thought it was funny, but I definitely remember making a point of, to the extent that you can think of responsibility as a kid, I didn't hold those kids responsible. I didn't hold my peers responsible for that. And at the time, I was smart enough to make a connection between the pinata problem and the American burying beetle display on cardboard with hand-drawn signs problem. I haven't thought about that in a while, but it has made a huge impact on me. out what's the least bad option because according to the map our friendly map we just go straight down it's not that bad given that there's no obvious way down I'm gonna call that not worth it <laughs> there's one more but it's a little further up the up the highway so I'll just explore that entrance later. Um, and now I'll head back and give the lecture. <laughs> 